For the first time in history, there are more than four generations in the workplace. But what kind of challenges does this create for employers? How do these generational differences affect the ability to manage employees and their expectations? Today, we are going to talk with three different generations from PwC. Holger is a partner in our audit practice and has been part of PwC for over 26 years. Kerstin is a director from our tax practice and joined the firm 17 years ago. Our third and last guest is Anais, who is a talent acquisition advisor, and she will be representing the millennials. They are going to share their experiences with us and how things have changed from their perspective over the past year, as well as the challenges we are going to be facing in the future. Hello, how are you doing? Hi, good, thank you. And you? Very well, thank you. Excellent today. <laughs> okay. Today we're going to talk about how different generations experience corporate life and what have been the major changes. So to start this episode, do you still remember your first day at PwC? And do you also remember how you felt? I think Holger should take this question first. <laughs> because I'm the oldest one. Most no, probably, yeah. Because you have very <laughs> vivid memories. It's a long time ago. Huh? It's 26 years ago now, even more. Um, I fully remember my first day. The first, it was a Friday. Uh, 1st of August, 1997. Some of you were not born then, I guess. Barely. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, the first day was easy. Uh, I, I just entered in the Treuarbeit. That was one of the predecessor mm -hmm. firms of PwC. Um, and the first day was easy. I got my PC in the morning and then I had to do the um, ASTF um, health check uh, oh. um, in the city center where you need to listen, you need to, uh, yeah, your heartbeat is tested and so on. Mm. That was my first day. That was easy. The week after, that was more more interesting because I was already out then at the client um, the next next Monday. Oh, wow. You know, Monday to Friday. Um, and I had to do some work, but maybe a little bit more on this later. <laughs> and Kerstin? So <clears throat> I started on 1st of June 2006 can't remember which work day, to be honest. <laughs> um, also cannot remember much of that day. It was just a day where I was trying to remember everybody's names, <laughs> trying to find my way around the building. Um, then at some point, I ended up a bit lonely in an office and people came and see me from time to time. But yeah, it was overall, it was fine. It was a nice experience. And for you, Anais? Well, for me, it was not that long ago. I joined a year and a half ago, uh, so 15th uh, July 2022. Um, so I do still remember it, uh, of course. Um, it was reassuring, exciting and nerve wracking at the same time, I would say. <laughs> um, the, I mean, like for everyone who starts a new job, uh, you're always nervous uh, to uh, join the new company. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I was excited. And how do you think your onboarding experience has been different from one another? Maybe Anais, you should start. Yeah, yeah. I can. Of course, I can start. Um, well, first of all, I didn't work stra straight away. Um, so the, the first day I had uh, an onboarding session in the in the morning and then I had lunch with my team. Um, I actually met my team before I was onboarded, before my first day. So that's also why I was a bit reassured uh, on, on the first day. Um, but I think maybe there was more of a focus of welcoming me to the firm and not straight up putting me to 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 work. Um, not that one is more positive than the other, but I would say from what you've said that that was the, the main difference. I think also what's a bit different is that when Holger started and I started, the, the company was smaller. I mean, when Holger started, quite a bit smaller. Mm. I don't know what the staff count was when I started. It must have been around maybe 1,000 employees, but it's still different to today. Mm. And then at the end, you still ended up in your team and it's still... Um, like those are the people who uh, you get to know first and you get to mm. know best at the beginning. Um, yeah, but I think that's that's probably one of the main differences. 
And also, um, I don't know what it's like to be onboarded today. Um, technology did not play such an important mm. role when we were onboarded, or at least when I was onboarded in 2006. So we didn't have iPhones. We had Blackberries. <laughs> <laughs> and um, also, yeah, we had a computer and we had actually some printouts uh, that we could refer to. And I think today you're probably just guided towards the nap. And that's probably it, <laughs> where you can find your way around. And that was still a bit different, um, I think, earlier. Yeah. You might not believe it, but mobile phones were not existing <laughs> when I started. <laughs> yeah. So when, when we have been at a client, we need to leave our telephone number at the board, at the secretary, so oh, that, wow. we, that she knows where she could call us. Wow. Yeah? So it was totally different. That's yeah. So but different. we were we had already laptops and we were able to connect with the laptop mm -hmm. to the office, to the server, not the whole time. Yeah, You dial in once or twice <laughs> a day to check your emails. Emails were not that much uh, at that time. But um, yeah, you, you were there at the client. Mm. Um, my onboarding, as I said um, before, um, on that next Monday, I was already at the client and I had to prepare an AML report, checking at the bank, mm -hmm. the AML procedures. Um, How was I trained? I think four weeks ago, uh, before I started, uh, I received a, a, um, a, a paper, uh, uh, a big letter with AML laws and oh procedures God. and audit program and all this kind of stuff. And they said, hi, Holger, uh, your first job will be the AML report at, at this bank. Uh, and here you have some stuff you can already prepare. Yeah. So... Wow. I was already prepared from from the technical stuff a little bit um, before I started. So four weeks before I joined the firm. That is so different from yeah. today. Exactly. Because I personally, I received information before, but it was more to get to know the company and to feel more comfortable when I joined. Um, you know, like a little pictures uh, of the building so that I can mm. see where's the cafeteria, where's everything, <laughs> but uh, nothing work-related work for yeah. sure. <laughs> I feel like also they put nowadays so much thought into how can the people feel welcome from their first day on and the uh, like work and technical aspect are like a second thought. Like once they're here, we'll figure it out and there will be trainings, but beforehand there's like no material that had been shared with the new joiners so they could prepare. Maybe maybe I should say uh, the Troya I was the person number 30 at that company. So mm -hmm. we were really small. And I also must say that I did a traineeship before. In, um, so in, in, yeah, in January, February before. So I know this guy already. Mm -hmm. uh, um, and they know me. Mm. And that's why yeah. it was a little bit, let's say, more, yeah, more relaxing. More hands-on. More hands-on. That's, that's what you're going to do. And mm. um, that's the client, you know, the client already. Yeah, I was there a few days during my traineeship. Mm. And um, yeah, that's why it was maybe a little bit different. Um, and I think we could not send now um, to all our new joiners um, documents of laws and, and other stuff um, because we even do not know where they will be playing. Yeah, and it's just too many with too like different yeah. backgrounds. It's just, I don't think we would be able to handle it properly. <laughs> and nobody would read them. <laughs> well... You put it out there. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be so negative. Yeah. <laughs> But no, I think it's also like just more about the feeling like that we create before people join. Because we now, like when I joined, we were 2,600. And I joined actually on a Go PwC. And I didn't know what I was getting myself into because I didn't read to the material that was shared beforehand. So I came in, I was like, oh, I think I'm in the wrong building. They're all wearing like suits and tie and no, all men. There was no women in the room I was in because due to COVID we were split up because I was like a late new joiner. I got put in the room with all the auditors. I didn't think like, I looked around me. I was like, not sure I'm in the right place. I might just leave and go home. Oh, so no. like, Yeah, the first That's day depressing. was. And also everyone was wearing masks. So you didn't see people like smile or you were not talking to each other. You were just sitting at your desk and waiting for them to let you know that you can leave. It was such a weird experience. So I think it got better afterwards yeah, when you good joined. Yeah, good thing we improved on that. I mean, it was due yes. to COVID, so nothing we could have done about it. But glad to see it's, uh, it's better now. <laughs> yeah. On onboarding during COVID was, I think, a mess. Yeah, it, it was yeah, really it was, difficult. It, yeah. Yeah. 
And integrating people into teams while you are home based all the time, you cannot meet them in person. Mm -hmm. Also, the training and um, explaining stuff um, uh, just through conference call that is not just not same. that easy. And um, I think it's better to see people in person. Yeah. But it's also the whole part of like having small talk with someone just got lost when you had a meeting because it's all about in your head about efficiency and getting your point across because you don't want the other person to like lose any time throughout the day. Well, when I step by your desk, like, oh, how Kirsten, how are you doing today? Like, how's it going for you in general? Which you would never do when you have like a virtual meeting. Well, we'll be up to the next question. How do you think the change of needs from one generation to another has shaped today's corporate culture? And what have been the major changes you have perceived? Yeah, so I think what has um, changed quite a bit is how we use technology nowadays. And I think that the younger people can be quite helpful in that regard. I mean, I don't need Gen Z to explain Instagram to me or anything like that. <laughs> That's not what I mean. But it's sometimes I think with the younger people, they say, take some shortcuts and that can actually be quite efficient. And that is something that I um, I appreciate quite a bit. And also, um, there are aspects about work flexibility that is also, I think, very much um, asked for by the newer people, like new joiners, um, younger people who are joining. They request that quite a bit. And I think that's fine. That's also... Um, something that we can make use of as someone being older or being here for longer. I think that is, yeah, some of the achievements that we have to thank the younger people for. I think when I started looking back a little bit, um, at that time, our generation, my friends from, from studies, we were all happy when we got a job. Yeah, mm -hmm. We didn't have this so many opportunities. You know, we were happy to get a job and earn our own money. Um, I was happy that I had could earn my own money because my parents could no, no longer uh, support me. And I think that is something which is different. First yeah. of all, I, I think people are supported when, when they start doing the studies. Um, usually the parents have more opportunities than at my time. Um, and yeah, and that's why I have the feeling that the younger generation is more picky what they want to do. The job should have been a purpose and not only to earn some money first. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that, that is important. Mm -hmm. I, I couldn't agree more. Um, I think the new generation is more purpose-driven as such. And also what I observe is not only the firm... Um, the way we interact with our clients, the way mm. we uh, render services, but also the impact we have um, on community um, in a more broader sense. Um, because I also think that the younger people are looking for different values. Mm. And it's not, yeah, it's, it's, it's the entire brand that we bring across um, also with our um, impact on the community and the people around us and also how the management of the firm reacts to um, yeah, what, what's going on in the world around us and not only focusing on what's going on locally or in the mm. markets that we are operating in. Yeah, I couldn't agree more, uh, actually. Um, I do think that the newer generation is not only looking for a job uh, and not only looking um, to have the salary at the end of the month. They're looking to work for a company they share values with, um, mm. a company that brings them flexibility, that brings them growth as well and where they feel comfortable growing in. Um, I would say it's a generation that's um, less stable in terms of opportunities so if they're not satisfied with their current position they will look elsewhere and so I do think that PwC has made an effort um, regarding this adapting to to this change as well with the flexibility options that we have other options that we have as well but yeah I think there was a, a great effort made, made in that sense. Yeah, I see it also with my daughter yeah she's also on working on, on several jobs now um, but she wants to do something which has a purpose, right? what mm -hmm. she really likes. And it's true that in an audit job, in a tax job, there are always some parts which are maybe not so interesting, uh, which you first don't see it is really necessary. And sometimes I have the feeling that people give up too early uh, mm -hmm. to, to, to 
uh, yeah. to get better jobs or more interesting parts of the jobs afterwards because I think the, the longer I'm now in the firm, it's getting more and more is interesting yeah. Yeah, because I see uh, transactions which I haven't seen three years ago now. Uh, so it's, it's becoming more and more interesting um, the more details you get in the job. And sometimes you need a little bit more patience. And um, I think there is also a challenge um, for us staying to staying attractive as an employer mm -hmm. for the younger people who are purpose driven and maybe who do not, as you mentioned, Holger, have that much the stamina of sitting through some more difficult situations mm -hmm. in their career and then just seeing how uh, it can evolve and progress. But that is also then uh, an opportunity because it will challenge us as an employer to um, make the job offers more competitive. Mm -hmm. And I think as such, that's, that's a good thing. Mm. I just think also like we grew up differently like if someone didn't go away like you uh, you block someone or you just unfollow someone on social media we never had like this need to be persistent with something so over our career is something we see like from a month to month basic and something's not working out instead of just sitting it out and be like oh it's going to be better anytime soon nah up to the next best thing because also the world is open to us now Meanwhile, before you didn't really leave home or you didn't go too far because you just wanted to stick close to home. Nowadays, it's like more mobility globally. So it makes it also harder for people to be like, I'll stick this one out. It's going to be okay in the end. Yeah, entirely. And there is also this part about the resources that are nowadays available to the younger generation yeah. because we were kind of looking around um, our let's say, friends and close relatives and what they did as mm. a job and also the resources that were um, accessible to us. Um, and I think now with the World Wide Web and all the access you have and how you can connect with people from the same generation through, for example, social media, that is a complete different experience and the resources are so different that it's for me not a surprise that mm. um, Gen Z is is uh, having a different attitude uh, towards uh, the workplace than than we probably have or did. Mm. Yeah, we need to adapt to it. No? Entirely, but, yes. We yeah. don't have a choice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but I, I still think, for example, Looking back in my career here, what I did on kind of interesting and different jobs, um, I'm still working in the same firm, that's true, mm -hmm. but with many, many, many different clients, with many, many different tasks. Um, yeah, so there, mm -hmm. so, some people, I think, does not have the opportunity to do so many different things within one company. That's true. Yeah, I was really lucky. That's true. Or well, yeah. I am really lucky. <laughs> yeah, that's the advantage of working uh, in this firm. It's not only working on clients and providing technical advice and being very focused on a certain type of task that you carry out every day, but there's a lot of variety also I'm seeing in what I'm doing. I'm doing now I'm doing a bit of social media, mm. I'm doing recruitment, I'm doing um, business development, some marketing initiatives. And that is really the diversity, I think, that you can appreciate as you grow in the firm and as mm. you grow in your roles. And that is that is very nice. That's, I think, the advantage of a bigger firm as well. You yeah, have more you can, opportunities. Yeah, you can have several careers in the yeah. same firm, which is... Yeah. Very nice. I think for us, because we work in HR, it's like a support service. It's just nice that even we on our scale, because we're not working with external clients, the impact that we can have, but also the trust that we are able to do projects and bring something to the table besides executing, for example, in our case, recruitment and recruitment and making offers. Yeah, it's also nice to work with um, colleagues from other service lines and to um, see what they have to bring to the discussion like we're having today. It's very nice. <laughs> I can say, for example, beside my normal audit work, I'm also giving lectures at the University of Applied Sciences in Trier since 20 years. So I see also every year the new mm. generations coming in. Uh, that, that's interesting. Um, and I'm also training uh, our uh, running team. So also um, oh, wow. every, every week. Um, there also you meet a lot of new people mm. and new generations. I'm the oldest one, sorry to say that, there in the training. <laughs> um, but uh, that that's fun and it shows the mm. flexibility and I'm still only within one firm. Yeah. You know? mm. 
Yeah, I really do. Like, if you want to explore different things, then you have the opportunity to. That's the great part, mm. I would say. Yeah. But what you need is proactivity. Of course. If you, of want, course. To do some, oh, yes. if you want to do something, yeah, you just need to do it. Don't sit in your yeah. office hiding in the corner mm -hmm. and wait that someone comes to you and says, do you want to do this? Mm -hmm. Nobody will come. Exactly. exactly. Yeah? Yeah. When we do interviews, HR interviews, oftentimes you ask, what do you think is the most important quality someone can have to be successful? And I always tell them proactivity. It's the most important. You create opportunities for yourself. They're not coming to you and seeing me like, as you just mentioned, like, would you like to do this? No, you go up to the person, you create your network, you create the opportunities for you. So you can also like create the career that you would like to have. So, yeah, I agree. And also, um, I think the biggest impediment is that sometimes people are shy if they want to br bring uh, their own ideas. And I think that's a mistake. I very much encourage also younger people to come with their own ideas. Mm. And honestly, a very wise and insightful person once told me the worst that can happen if you come up with your own ideas is that the other person says no. But mm. then you'll still survive and you can still carry on yeah. and that's fine. You know, at least you've tried. <laughs> and um, yeah, <laughs> that's, I just wanted to share that. Sorry. That's yeah, a good but, piece but of advice. Kessin, that's, that's a good point. Um, the, the, the generation said as the, we want to do something on purpose, we want to do something, we want, but then when it comes to, uh, to work, sometimes they don't dare to ask. Um, and I see it also t partly, they don't dare to ask clients. Mm. They're a little bit afraid calling the client or even going there and having a, a real physical conversation. Mm. Um, they prefer, maybe it's different, um, to write an email. Makes yeah. such a difference. Yeah. Exactly. And I, I can see when you talk to a guy, then you see the direct the, the reaction. You don't see it in the email. Mm. Yeah? And But that is what I don't understand from the young generation. They are, they are open, they are global and, and everything. But when it really comes then to physical conversation, they are a little bit shy. They also think that we don't ask our clients often enough, which is their preferred way of communicating with us. Mm. Some people really enjoy phone calls and others don't so much. It's a personality question. And mm. I think if you interact with a person who really very much enjoys having the one-on-one -on -one conversation and then you take the phone um, and then you send less emails. And I mean, anyhow, we're receiving too many emails, are we not? <laughs> we do. <laughs> That's yeah, I think it's a generational thing mm. as well. The not liking to call personally if I have to make an appointment with the doctor, the hairdresser. If I have the option to book my appointment online and not call, <laughs> I will take that option. Exactly. It's. I would say it's also due to social media and texting and, yeah. and things like this. And we're less used than um, an older generation to pick up the phone and call because we were raised with text messages and uh, Behind the screen, Facebook basically. and yeah, like Facebook messages and so on and texting and not talking so i would say that's probably why we're mm. a bit shy with this but i completely relate to what you just explained <laughs> but if you call a restaurant then you most of the time you get a much better table probably i leave a comment at the table i would like <laughs> <laughs> but yeah i can just i i completely agree with Anna. It's because we hide behind screens from a yeah. young age we behind behind the profile picture like it's just a picture out there i don't need to look in the face to leave a mean comment even that's why we have like this a generation of hate like on social media and all because it's so easy you hide no one can see you but you also don't need to see the other's reaction and that's a big point for me for example I don't need to see if I said like the worst case is a no I personally prefer a no by email than a no from face to face <laughs> it's easier to handle for me <laughs> oh, I understand um, on the other hand if you have a no in a conversation you see also a face to it you see a reaction to it yeah. And it's all, and you have the opportunity of asking for an explanation. Maybe you won't have it, but at least you have this opportunity, and mm. you don't enter into a long uh, text exchange or. Oh no! If there's a no, I will just put him in like the correct folder in Outlook, and that's that's okay for me then. Okay, yeah. it's just in then, the then oh. you have you filed it. it it's fine. there. <laughs> I don't need to see it anymore. But it may happen that 
if you would have the same conversation orally instead of emails back and forth, mm -hmm. that you get a yes instead of a no. Yeah, and that's huh? because very true. because people see your your ambitious, your motivation, mm -hmm. your commitment to to drive forward the project, and then they believe you much more if you see you and see your smile, your yeah. energy, instead of just seeing an email from you. Yeah, but I agree that's something we have learned working in the big four. Because I was an email person, now I'm also like more of a call person yeah. because I understood the impact it has. But let's just say in my private life, I still prefer the text message. Yeah, <laughs> We're recruiters, so we are have people on the phone all day. Yes. Yeah. So I think we got used to it due to our job. But same yeah. thing in my personal life, I will, I will never call. I will prefer text. I call my mom because it takes too long for her to answer my text message. But <laughs> other than that, don't expect me to call you, please. <laughs> and before we finish up, what is a piece of advice that you would like to give to our listeners who are currently navigating the corporate world or even the job market? Try to find a job that you really enjoy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to, to continue on that, try to find a job you really enjoy and it's okay to not find it from the first try. You can, we're also in a moment where you can switch careers and it's not going to be perceived badly. So if you try something and you realize you made a mistake, it's not a mistake because it's a, it's a learning experience. <laughs> But if you realize you don't like it as much as you thought you would, then it's fine to, to switch and to explore new opportunities. I think only if you are happy in your job, you deliver good quality. That's why I fully agree with you saying, okay, do a job where we, you really like and you are behind the job, but also don't give up so early. Mm. Yeah? In each and every job, there are items, tasks, which you don't like. Mm. Yeah? Even in my, yeah? not, not a lot, yeah? but um, mm. there are also some items I don't like, but don't give up because there are so many opportunities also mm. on, on, the, on the good part of the job, uh, which should Uh, balance the yeah. small bad parts. I have one additional piece of advice, if I may. So uh, when I think of myself as past casting, as a 25-year-old <laughs> or so, um, I was very uh, shy to ask for yeah. advice. And um, it's just over the years that I found out that when you ask more experienced people for their advice... A lot of them will very generously share their wisdom with mm. you. And um, I underestimated that. I didn't want to bother people, so I was a bit shy. I never asked mm. for any advice, and I, I think I should have done that more. Mm. Kesson, one problem is in our firm, for example, being a partner, that nobody dares to come into yeah. your office and ask the question, even if my door is always open. Yeah. If they first did it, <laughs> if they did it the first time, then they will repeat it. Yeah. Yeah, but the first This little step to knock on the door, even if the door is mm -hmm. open, it's a yeah. it's difficult. It it is because we feel like, oh, you're so experienced, you don't have the time to give us advice and to just help us out to sit down with us. So, for example, we meet a lot with a lot of partners because we, as recruitment, we need to validate things with the leadership. And I really enjoy when people just sit down and be like, now we take just two minutes to talk about you. How are you really doing? And not like the, oh, how are you doing at the beginning of the meeting? No, the question like, how are you doing? And then from there, you can just kind of create this relationship where you feel open enough to just knock on the door and be like, hey, I had this. I don't know how to handle it. Maybe you can just go over it with me so we can think or brainstorm together what I could have done differently or better next time. Yeah, and I think there is hope because what I read about Gen Zers is that they're not so much focused on hierarchy mm. like mm. other generations. So maybe there is hope that that can change one day. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. so. Yeah. yeah, probably. It's still a bit impressive, I would say, to just go to a partner mm. and ask a question. But like you mentioned, once you do it once, you, you do it once. The first time is hard. The first time you, you have sweaty palms a little. Yeah. Um, you stumble on your words, but then afterwards you get more comfortable doing it. So to, yeah, the first, step, the first step is the hardest. Yeah. And then you repeat it. Eh? And, and as Kerstin mentioned before, the worst thing you can get is a no on a question. Yeah. The worst thing you can get if you ask a partner if he has time is, please come back in one hour. Mm, that's, that's the true. worst thing you can get. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah. That's very much true. Or and maybe it's one and a half hours. Maybe also next day. You never know. You know, if you need to leave to go yeah. to the clients, who knows? And the best piece of advice I ever received is like, your career is a marathon, not a sprint. 
because as so as if you're younger, you just want to you know focus on getting the next big promotion and doing it faster and faster. But at one point, you would just be stagnating because you need to grow in your role before getting to the next step. So I always tell my candidates and also the new journalists I meet, have fun because you need to find the fun in the little things in your job. Because as I mentioned earlier, not everything is super fun and not always is like your best day ever, but try to find the little things that you enjoy. So the overall week feels a little bit shorter maybe. Or like I like to say, Fridays don't count. <laughs> So thank you all so much for joining me today. Thank, thank you for you. having us. It was very nice. It was a pleasure. That's it for today's episode. And if you don't want to miss out on our upcoming stories, hit subscribe and feel free to share. Let us know what you think. Thank you for listening and see you for the next episode of Casual Side.